The idea behind this show really has been in sort of the pipeline for, for, for many years. It was the idea of bringing together a high quality grouping of Ben Nicholson's carved reliefs and drawings from the second half of his career and just demonstrating just the, the sheer beauty of them but also the kind of complexities behind these abstract works. How that these were carvings, abstract pieces that very much related to Ben Nicholson's experiences of moving uh, to the continent, living in Switzerland, living on uh, Lake Maggiore on the Swiss-Italian border and also the experience of visiting many of the beautiful sort of sites of Italy and also Greece and how through drawing, through contemplation, through the process of being in those spaces, studying these buildings in great detail, and getting a sense of the atmosphere, the ideas, as he would say, behind uh, these, these kind of ancient science or Renaissance churches, and how he would feed that into works which, on first inspection, appear predominantly abstract. But of course, within them is that experience of the site, the experience of process, the experience of making the works themselves, reflecting perhaps on a visit to, to, to Tuscany whilst back in the studio, thinking about the forms within the landscape, the textures, the light. And he feeds this back into these abstract works in a way that they seem so complete when we experience them in the room. In order to really sort of get to uh, come to terms with, with perhaps what Nicholson's relationship was with, with Europe as a place, but also with specific sites that he visited throughout um, the sort of late 1950s, 60s and into the early 1970s, I'd like to look at a few of the reliefs and a few of the drawings, just really to sort of look at where Nicholson is focusing, looking at the materials and the techniques and how he's working with his own experiences, but also the, own, the processes of the works themselves. So I think this beautiful relief really encapsulates the sense of joy and confidence in Nicholson's work at this, this particular moment in 1959. It has the kind of the clarity and the assuredness of the abstract white reliefs of the 1930s. Into that he's brought this sense of place, this sense of experience of particular landscapes at this moment. Nicholson had been obsessed with Greece as a place for a long time. Going back into the 1920s and 30s, he often wrote about how magical Greece must have been as a place to visit. And um, he also named some of his works from that period with this title, Greece. However, it was only in 1959 that he first visited um, the country. And this is a work that was produced shortly after his return to his studio in Ticino. So this, this is a great example, really, of how, how Ben Nicholson's drawing practice evolved um, during the period that he was living and working uh, in Switzerland and travelling across Europe. Um, it's not just the subject matter that's, that, that's of interest for Nicholson, it's actually the process of putting the drawing together. And as you can see with this particular example, the paper is in a regular shape. Now, he would cut that shape out of a bit of paper before he set off on his drawing trip, almost like the shape of a relief, perhaps. And then he's put over also a wash of colour, which would have also been done in advance. So he's got an irregular piece of paper with a wash over it. He sat down with his board with the paper on top. He then looks at the subject that he wants to draw. And really, it's not just capturing the scene in front of him. It's working in dialogue with the materiality of the material, the materiality of the irregular shape. So in a way, you can see very interesting parallels with the way he's working with the carved relief in that sense. Okay, so this is a wonderful piece that's on loan from the, the British Council, August 1964, um, Ratiano. And it really kind of encapsulates lots of the kind of aspects that we were trying to bring together in this show. As I said, it's from 1964, and it's a work that's very much about the sort of the landscape, Ben Nicholson's experiences in the landscape in Italy and in Greece around this time, but also in Ticino, where he's living. And, you know, you can look at this work and you, see, you can see the white. Now, is this the white of, you know, the temples of the Greek islands? Or maybe it's the white of the mountain landscape that he saw across Lake Maggiore from his home in Brazago at the time. The blues, is it the blue of the, the lake itself? Is it Lake Maggiore? Or is it, is it the sea of the Greek islands coming together? And this is really what's at the heart of Ben Nicholson's abstract work. It's the ideas of suggestions of place. It's, he's evoking places. 
His works, he said he wanted to be like equivalents. He's not trying to, to describe somewhere specifically. He's not trying to present a topographical rendering of a specific place. He's trying to create the atmosphere of the lights, of the colours, the feelings of being within that place, or within an abstract um, um, artwork such as this. Also, I think it demonstrates Nicholson's still standing as a mid-20th century abstract artist at this time. Now, Nicholson greatly admired the works of artists such as Mark Rothko, of Mark Toby, um, Bizier, an artist he knew in Switzerland who lived nearby him. And Nicholson really fits in with that, that kind of sense of the importance of abstraction in evoking experiences, memories, and something of the artist's feelings within, within being within a place, but also the process of making. You know, this work is made from Pabotex board. It's a very hard, resistant, engineered fibre board, which takes lots to scrape away at. And he's using razor blades to get these very gentle, subtle lines within the work. And of course, he's playing with this use of shadow within the work. Shadow is very important. But he realises he gets that crispness with the Pabotex board that makes the shadows all the darker, all the more crisper. Like you see, you know, the moonlight across Lake Maggiore, that crisp line around the moon the differences between um, landscape features. Also, you could find comparisons with his interest perhaps in megaliths, in prehistoric standing stones within this work. But it is all of these, coming, all of these things coming together within one work. This wonderful work on loan from Southampton Art Gallery, um, I think really sort of shows um, Nicholson's interest in the prehistoric standing stones, both those that he saw in Cornwall, but also Karnak in France, and how he's trying to sort of embody that sense of monumentality, but also that sense of time-worn uh, agedness uh, within a relatively small work. And I think he certainly captures that within um, this particular piece. So I think these two works really um, are two very interesting demonstrations of how Nicholson works with, with size and scale in the carved reliefs of this particular period. The one on the right is, is an interesting example because it's, it's, of course, smaller, but actually a number of these smaller works from this period, Nicholson actually entitled them as projects for freestanding wars. And he was sort of looking towards the possibility of creating large-scale versions of these reliefs, one of which was realised in Documenta, in 1964, and it demonstrated how Nicholson was actually able to envisage monumentality on such a small scale. This later work um, from 1971 within the show really sort of demonstrates kind of ongoing ambition uh, that Nicholson retained throughout his career. You know, the sense that this is an artist that's, you know, entering into the last decade of his, his career, but, you know, is still looking to advance um, in, in terms of the work he's producing. He's had this incredible decade living in, in the centre of Europe. He's taken the opportunity to visit the Venice Biennale whenever he could, to go to the documentary show, to really look at the work of young artists, see what young artists are doing, and pushing himself further in terms of his own work. And we can see that within the, the, this fantastic uh, relief where you know, we have an increased sense of sort of almost gestural painting uh, that we don't often see in, in the reliefs of the earliest period in, within the show. But I think it's Nicholson pushing himself. It's Nicholson saying, how far can I go with this balancing act between structure and expression, this balancing act between the carved relief elements and the application of paint onto the surface of the board. And I think this work really does demonstrate the kind of ongoing ambition and sense of investigation, the joyous sort of feeling of working with materials that runs throughout Nicholson's career is still continuing. <laughs>